the explosion and the recoil on it was three to four times what it is on my nine millimeter. And the fire that shot out of it was so bright that it stunned me. Hey guys, it's Prissy. Today I want to talk to you about firearms, particularly Glock, particularly mines. Um, I recently had a very bad experience, but I want to first start off by saying that I am a Glock girl and all my life I was afraid of weapons. All my life. I worked at the mall where there were shootings and I never carried. I got into real estate and I had several threats from some sickos that really scared me and I never got a gun because I was always very afraid of them and their power and yeah I watched westerns and saw the backfire and how you could get harmed by your own weapon and that scared me and everybody made fun of me for that which is ironic anyway about a year and a half ago um, my husband and I decided because he travels a lot and I travel a lot and we've had several different attempts where people have tried to harm us we decided to go and get tactical training and then get our concealed carry license which was the best thing we ever did because I not only am not afraid of guns anymore I am proficient with my gun I am very secure and confident that I'm safe with my weapon and this is my Glock G19 9mm generation 4 and it's completely empty, unloaded. You can see daylight in there. I'm a very cautious with it. But I know how to use it, and I really, 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 really value this gun. Um, I did not want a little pea shooter, prissy pink one. I wanted something that when I went to shoot, I knew that the lead in here was gonna do what it needed to do to neutralize the situation, because I hope to never have to use it, but if I do, it is because my life is feeling threatened and I need to neutralize the situation. So that's my G19 that I love. The problem with my G19 is I'm a smaller framed woman. I'm 5'2". So trying to get some kind of way for me to carry that weapon, whether it be through a vest, is it's not possible. Not without people saying it anyway. And I can't get a pocket holster because then that's going to stick out also and to be quite honest I don't want to advertise that I have a weapon on me because I don't want to look for trouble I'm not trying to start anything I never hope to have to ever use my weapon but the bad guys have weapons and so we have weapons and you should have a weapon and I do recommend you have a Glock because it is reliable most of the time um, However, because of the inconvenience of carrying my 19, I decided to get a smaller, more compact gun. And initially, I wanted to get the bodyguard because, hey, it's the bodyguard. Everybody wants the bodyguard, right? But then when I got to the armory in Nashville, I realized my long-lost love that I needed and wanted was the G42 380 Auto. And this gun is so nice. That is a sleek, very, very sexy gun. And I got it in the BFG Battlefield Green, and then I also had the Crimson Trace Laser attached, which was awesome. I uh, love it because when you grip your gun, it automatically comes on. You don't have to push a button. So all I'm doing is holding my gun, and my laser is pointing. Um, like I said, when my life has felt threatened, it's been mostly at night. So when we target practice, we target practice at night. 99% of the time when you're in a situation that you would need to fight, probably it's going to be nighttime. So it's not going to be the beautiful sunny day with butterflies and birds chirping and perfect vision. It's probably going to be really dark and you're going to be anxious. And target practicing at night, I do recommend. That's the way that we like to do it. Having a laser is very nice also. Um, so my husband and I, uh, have lasers on our gun. He has a Ruger and he shot my Glock 19 and he loves that Glock 19. Well, I mean, just to be honest, the sights alone, um, being able to have front focus on the sights, I mean, my gosh, look at that. 
but the stability of the weapon is just amazing. The, the recoil is nothing. And that's the reason I went ahead with the G42 is because the recoil on the G42 is nothing compared to the recoil on the bodyguard and everything else. And so that's why I went with it. I've never fired it, but this is what I've been told. And I am a Glock girl, like I said, and I love the reliability. Okay, so 19 is too big to carry on my body. I carry girly bags, Louis Vuittons, coaches. They don't have a spot you can put a gun down in. So I needed something more compact, got the G42. Okay, I'm excited about this. I really wanted this gun, right? I know that it's not probably a lethal gun in an instance to where I would need to put more shots into a body and in better areas probably to get a dead kill stop, but it's better to have some weapon than no weapon on you, right? And anyway, I went to go and shoot this and I just bought it. It had been in the case, never been touched, except for me to load it, slip the magazine in, cock it, aim and shoot. And I wanted to test the laser, the accuracy of the laser. Well, I only got to fire one round on it. So, I go to shoot the gun, right? And I know, I'm, I'm used to recoil on my 9mm, and I can handle it, I'm used to it. And I shoot at night so I know it spits fire. I am not at all concerned about any of these things. I know the 380 is not going to have near as much power as my 9mm, so I'm not concerned. When I went to shoot this gun, immediately when I fired it, the explosion and the recoil on it was three to four times what it is on my nine millimeter. And the fire that shot out of it was so bright that it stunned me. The, the sound was so loud that it took my hearing away. It actually took my and my husband's hearing away for two days. Um, the blast made my hands and arms go numb, completely numb. Scared the living daylights out of me. And this is a 380 that most people laugh at if you carry, right? <clears throat> I looked at my husband because I was in shock. I couldn't believe what just happened. My gun just blew up in my hand. And uh, his reaction was, he said, you know, uh, try to fire another round. And I was stunned. And so I went ahead and tried to fire another round. And when I squeezed the trigger, the trigger pulled all the way back and locked. And that's a safety feature of Glock that I'm thankful for because had another round loaded with that casing still in there, was what we found out, there was another casing in there, then it probably would have blown up and I would have definitely not been here or not been looking like this or not had arms to hold and show you. Um, so when it locked back, immediately I dropped the mag. My husband said, let's count the bullets. We counted the bullets. They did not add up. Okay? So come to find out. He took the weapon. At this point, I'm terrified of it. He took the weapon and found out that the casing was still inside of the, of the gun. It did not eject. So, the bullet went off. The round shot, boom, in my hand. And the casing stayed in there. Here's the casing. I have it. I have to keep it because I have to ship it back. That's the reason I'm making this video really, really quick. is just because I'm about to ship this baby back off and I wanted to let everybody know what happened because this is what I found out is a very rare occurrence, especially for a Glock. Um, luckily... Glock has another safety feature that is shock absorption. So, when this exploded in my arms, the shock absorption actually took most of the pressure away. So, I still have my fingers and my hands and my face, and I'm talking to you right now. When I spoke to the armory, they said that, uh, you know, manufacturer first shot, first round, and this is what happened. It's probably manufacturer. They come off of the line and there's like one in a million that has a problem, a defect. And that's probably what happened. Um, they told me to contact Glock. So I called Glock. And Glock, first of all, is wanting to cover their tail, which, you know, obviously. And Glock is very reliable. So I wouldn't think it would be the Glock's fault either. However, it messed up. They seem to think that it could be the ammunition, which um, I bought the best ammunition that I really could get for target practicing. This is 9mm, that's English, okay? Browning Court, 380 Auto, Eco, full metal jackets. I have the hollow point for 
real life. But the full metal jackets are for targeting. And um, that's a good bullet. That's not a cheap bullet. So Glock tells me they want me to ship it back and they're going to analyze it because you can't see because I'm doing this quickly on my iMac, but there is uh, explosion dust on the outside of my weapon. And that's not on my 9mm. I shot a full rounds of cases of bullets through it and don't have that. Um, also, it's slightly swollen in the barrel. And they said that it is definitely internally damaged. And what they would have to do is uh, me send it back, then work on it, and then send it back to me. However, I kind of don't like that because, like I said, I was very scared of weapons my whole life, okay? And I just recently became confident in it, in my G19. That's my buddy. That's my baby over there. And um, now I have this weapon that misfired on me and could have killed me or at least injured me badly. Not to mention that if, I, if this was a real life situation and an intruder actually came into our home and I pull out this weapon because it's night and I think I want to use the laser and it's my first shot, right? And I take that shot and it misfires whether I'm stunned, injured, or not, from it misfiring, I am already at a bad stance. That The intruder has me. I'm gone. So that's not a good deal. When he told me he wants me to send it back, I'm like, okay, and he wants me to send the casing. Like I said, I've got it right here. Um, and then he says he's going to send it back to me after it's been worked on, and I'm like, okay, are you going to fire it? Because... I don't want to fire it. I'm deathly afraid of this weapon now. I, I want nothing to do with it, as a matter of fact. Maybe it's because it's the color. Maybe it's because it's a G42. It's, you know, it's newer. I don't know, but I don't want it. I'm never going to use it. I don't know what the options are for that. Can someone please comment and let me know? Um, is there an option for me to uh, refuse that weapon? And either exchange it out for another one, a new one. Maybe let's not get the cute color. Let's not get the military look. Maybe let's just get the standard black. Um, is there a way that I could exchange it and get it money towards another Glock? Um, Glock is not supposed to have this problem. Glock is the most reliable gun from what I have found out, the research. The reason I'm a Glock girl and chose Glock was because it is reliable. The recoil is less. You've got the better sights. You've got the better stability. Yeah, you don't have a safety on it. You don't need the safety on it. I have children, okay? Safety on, on a gun is just a click of a button. My child can flick a button, but what my child cannot do is cock a weapon. So what I do is I keep my magazine full, typically, and I do not keep a live round in the chamber so that in the event that I need to pull my weapon and I feel my life is threatened, I will pull, and it's a natural motion to cock the gun. This is empty, so it's going to lock back. I'm going to snap it so don't get scared. Um... It's a natural motion to cock it, okay? My children cannot cock this weapon. That's safety for me. My children can switch a button very easily, so I don't need a safety on it. Glock is the gun to have, but I definitely would not recommend the 42. And I'm trying to figure out what's my next step. So if you have any kind of tactical experience or you're military, you're a um, police officer, or you're just a gun enthusiast, please comment down below let me know what you would do in this situation. Let me know if this was your wife or someone that you love and this was the weapon that they were choosing to go around and carry and they had this problem, would you want it to be shipped off and shipped back to you and expect to use it in real life situation and put your life on the line for it? The guy at Glock told me immediately how thankful he was that I was okay and that I was very lucky and then he told me to Google catastrophic gun failures which is a bad idea because I was already so scared anyway and when I googled that it is very disturbing to see what can happen in those situations and I am indeed lucky and I would say I'm blessed okay so I've lost confidence in this weapon but I've not lost confidence in my G19 and I'm thankful that I have it should I should I wonder if that could happen to that gun I don't know anymore. I feel kind of lost. So I wanted to throw this video together 
if you can provide me any kind of input at all, just, you know, assurance or that, yeah, I did the right thing and, you know, Glock will take good care of me. They know the liability, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Tell me, please make me feel better. If you think I'm over exaggerating, tell me. I personally don't think so. I personally think that if you were there and it fired off in your hand, you'd be scared shitless, but that's just me. Um, thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And I do want to send this message out to warn others. Be safe. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.